Hello, and welcome to another short box from Warhammer 40k's Grim History from the Beyond. I'm Zekthar, and for the next few weeks we'll be talking about the Unification Wars. Now, the Unification Wars were a series of military campaigns run by the Emperor to slowly take over Terra, before he began his long campaign of conquering the galaxy and uniting all humanity under his rule. Now, since next month, Yuxin and I will be going over the Horus Heresy, I figured a little background this month would be a good idea. I hope you enjoy this next few weeks on this subject. <clears throat> well, when we last left off a week ago, the Age of Strife was in its zenith, and the Emperor of Man was ready to conquer Old Earth, also known as Terra. But like I said before, he would need some help. From some of the mightiest warriors humanity has ever seen, even bigger and badder than the Adeptus Astartes. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Thunder Warriors. Now, the Thunder Warriors hold a lot of the same characteristics as the Space Marines, yet there are some slight differences. Like the Space Marines, the Thunder Warriors were genetically engineered warriors, created by the Emperor to serve in his armies. Yet, the Thunder Warriors were first, a sort of proto-Astartes, who were created like the later generations of true Space Marines from advanced genetic engineering techniques. Though these were not as efficient as what was used later to create the Space Marines. Think Terran 42. You know, when a new game comes out for all the platforms. But it was rushed, so it's full of bugs and problems. That's what the Thunder Warriors were. Through trial and error, the Emperor perfected these bugs and eventually made the Space Marines, yet drastically changed some aspects of their customization. I also must point out that not all the Thunder Warriors, unlike the Space Marines, were willing subjects to this genetic altercation. Some were actually captives of the Emperor and had been taken during the Unification Wars. The similarities of the Thunder Warriors and Space Marines are actually pretty obvious. The Emperor built the proto astartes to be faster, stronger, and more powerful than any of the feral barbarian gene sept warriors that claimed fealty over the various techno-barbarian national states of Old Earth. The Thunder Warriors were a gestalt mix of unprecedented superhuman physical power, gene-programmed resistance to environment, and even psychic attack, with a warlike spirit and the Emperor's own strategic genius. Also like the Space Marines, they were separated into 20 Thunder Regiments and were mightier than any army that had come before them. And the forces of the powerful tyrants of Old Earth had nothing to match them. These genetically enhanced soldiers were created to drag their world back from the anarchy into which it had fallen. Now, this is where the similarities start to differ. The Thunder Warriors were stronger and faster than Space Marines and were built solely for war. They also were not as stable mentally, which caused problems. The Emperor knew that once peace came to Terra, the Thunder Warriors would inevitably pose a risk to the new state's stability through their very existence and the flaws that had resulted in much mental instability and early deaths due to metabolic collapse among their ranks. Now, this is actually fairly interesting to me because the Emperor genetically engineered them this way. Now, I mean, not the insanity, but the metabolic collapse of their bodies. This caused them to age rapidly, as opposed to the Astartes, who, as we have mentioned before, can live thousands of years. The Thunder Warriors, as opposed to the Astartes, had been enhanced as mature adult men, and their bodies often rebelled against the genetic changes only a few short Terran decades after the transformation. All this meant to the Emperor was that Thunder Warriors could not be allowed to survive the conflict they had been created to fight. In shorter terms, the Emperor of Mankind bred these men for war, singularly for Old Earth. And once this was done, he had to get rid of them. Now, according to the historians of the Imperium in the 41st millennium, the end of the Thunder Warriors was a glorious end, known as the Battle of Mount Ararat, which was fought in the kingdom of Uratur in 669.m30. During this final battle, the remaining Thunder Warriors were slain to a man. The chronicles record the famed Thunder Warrior Arik Taranis, known as the Lightning Bearer. Now, more about him later, but... <clears throat> Raise the banner of lightning at the final declaration of unity, which established the rule of the Emperor of Mankind over the entirety of Terra before dying of his wounds. 
it was a measure of the Thunder War's heroic sacrifice that they had all died to win the last and greatest victory for the Emperor. Now, that sounds pretty good. Unfortunately, this heroic version of events was completely false. The Thunder Warriors did not die to a man during the final battle of the Unification Wars. Instead, they had been brutally culled from existence by the Emperor's own servants on his orders. The Thunder Warriors had been destroyed by their own creator, a secret skillfully concealed from the people of the Imperium for more than 10,000 Terran years. To carry out his plans for humanity, the Emperor accepted that he would have to make certain actions that were essentially immoral in order to achieve the greater good of mankind. To put it simply, the Emperor had opened Pandora's box, a genetically enhanced warrior that could usurp him at any time. This would not do, not only because he wanted to rule mankind, but also because he had built in structures to the genomes of the Thunder Warriors that gave them short lifespans. I mean, think about it. What if a Thunder Warrior killed the Emperor and took over? Even if he was twice the ruler the Emperor was, he would still die in about 20 years. This would obviously lead to new wars on Terra, which the Emperor could not allow. Now, like I said before, this is the interesting part because the Emperor designed the Thunder Warriors with a genome code that would make sure that they couldn't surpass him. They aged that quickly. And this is very much a, uh, I want humanity to succeed, but only if I'm their savior. In the years to come, the Emperor needed the people of Terra to unite behind a single dominant leader in order to begin the future reconquest of the galaxy during the Great Crusade, which he intended to unleash next. To create his legend and unite all mankind behind his rule as an enlightened and invincible leader, the official record had to reflect that the Emperor had largely won the war and reunified Terra single-handedly. Now, at first, the Emperor simply did not replace their numbers as they fell to battle or insanity, but then decided to take more active measures. According to Eric Tyrannus, the final calling of the Thunder Warriors took place following the victory of the last Battle of Unity, and was carried out by the Legio Custodes, the only soldiers in the Imperial armies capable of defeating the Thunder Legions. Though some Thunder Warriors successfully escaped the cult, the vast majority of those who survived the Unification Wars died at the hands of their own allies. Individually or in small groups, like the self-stylized Diet Tar, Thunder Warriors present during the Cerberus insurrection of the early Great Crusade period, some Thunder Warriors would survive the culling, living mostly anonymously and miserable lives amongst the population of Terra, all honors of their past forsaken, always fearful of being discovered. Yet, the most famous of these survivors we've already mentioned, Eric Tyrannus. Now, his mortal name is not recorded within the Imperial Historical Archives, but when he was reborn into the new form of one of the first prototype Astartes, he was named Eric Taranis. Taranis and his battle brothers were created as tools of deadly efficiency, intended to spread terror amongst the Emperor's enemies and serve as the perfect killing machines. Their goal was to drag Terra back from the anarchy into which it had fallen for over five millennia, and into a new age of enlightenment and peace though they themselves would never know anything but war. It was against this backdrop of oppression, violence, and casual brutality that Eric Taranis and his fellow Thunder Warriors carved a reputation as the indisputed soldiers of their age. Eric Taranis would forge a legend that would still resonate with the modern space marines created as the replacements for the Thunder Warriors before the start of the Great Crusade. Even millennia later, Imperial records were strewn with the historic battles Eric Tyrannus had helped to win, the terrible foes he had slain, and the great honors he had earned fighting the Emperor's legions during the Unification Wars. He would become history wrought in living form, the victor of Galdur, the last rider, the butcher of Scandia, the throne slayer. These and a hundred other battle honors earned by this incomparable warrior are scattered throughout the historical texts written about the foundation of the Imperium. All these tales culminated in the end of Tyrannus's life, atop a once flooded mountain during the final great clash of the Unification Wars, the Battle of Mount Ararat, fought in the kingdom of Uratur. Eric Tyrannus survived the Battle of Mount Ararat, 
and when the bloody fighting was done, he and his brothers had been betrayed by the emperor. His men, who had fought and struggled so valiantly for him, would be exterminated. Every last one of them. Amazingly, Tyrannus bore no ill will towards his creator for this monstrous and secret betrayal. For he understood better than anyone that the Thunder Warriors had always been merely a means to an end. He and all of his kind had been cast aside by the Emperor in favor of the more advanced space marine, Jean Template. Eric Tyrannus was one of only a small number of Thunder Warriors who managed to escape the final cull of his kind after Mount Ararat. Tyrannus managed to hide himself amongst the teeming masses of mankind on Terra for over a century after the end of the Unification Wars, shunning his former name and assuming a new identity. He became the despicable criminal warlord, Babu Drakhal, clan master of Drakhal Gang, the master of most of the petitioner's city criminal enterprises, including prostitution, gambling, and the illegal sale of food, drugs, and weapons. Nothing moved within the city without Babu's approval. During the centuries spent on the run from the Imperial authorities, Tyrannus discovered the inherent flaw that lay within every Thunder Warrior's genetic makeup, for their lifespans had been engineered to be extremely limited, unlike the true Astartes who came after them and would live for hundreds of Terran years. Unbeknownst to anyone outside of the Petitioner's city, Tyrannus maintained a well-equipped genetic laboratory at the heart of the city. The fact that such an advanced laboratory existed on Terra was not surprising, but that it was to be found in the heart of that city of lost souls was nothing short of miraculous, akin to finding a fully functional starship buried within the ruins of old Earth's ancient prehistory. Fortunately for Tyrannus, he had learned what he could from the creator in the years of the Unification Wars, and had come to master much of the Emperor's knowledge of the ancient science of genetics. Unfortunately, Tyrannus did not possess enough knowledge to halt his own cellular deterioration, only enough to desperately cling to life long enough for his fortunes to finally change during the opening days of the Horus Heresy. Now, eventually fate would bring Tyrannus into the path of the traitors known as the Outcast Dead. Now, this small group of Astarte warriors was made up of the remnants of the Crusader host, a small honor guard of space marines comprised of representatives from each of the 18 Space Marine Legions that served on a rotational basis within the Imperial City outside the Imperial Palace on Terra. These Astartes were considered traitors because of the actions of their legions, half a galaxy away. During the opening days of the Horus Heresy, when they joined in the War Master's rebellion against the Emperor, they were hunted and eventually captured by Imperial forces and thrown into the Legio Custodes prison on Kangba Maru, located beneath the mountainous peak of Rakaposhi. Kangba Maru was where individuals deemed hostile to the Emperor were isolated from the world above. Yet the seven warriors were no ordinary prisoners, for they were a distinctive brotherhood composed of Astartes from a various traitor legions. Tyrannus encountered this outcast dead at the Temple of Woe, located within the slums of the Petitioner City. There the outcast dead were cornered by an Imperial hunter team that had been tracking them since their escape from their prison. Now, during the ensuing battle, the majority of the Astartes and the outcast dead were killed during the confrontation with the Imperial forces. But Tyrannus and his lieutenant within the Drakhal gang, Gotha, Another Thunder Warrior took advantage of this distraction and managed to escape during the ensuing chaos. Somehow, Tyrannus managed to obtain the progenoid glands of one of the fallen Astartes. These organs contained the vital key needed to provide the means for Tyrannus to unlock the genetic secrets that would allow the surviving Thunder Warriors to extend their lives. Deep in the heart of the Petitioner's city, Tyrannus experimented with his ill-gotten samples within his secret laboratory. Using gene samplers, he managed to extract the necessary information encoded within the glands stored zygotes of the Astartes organs and the impossibly complex amino acid chains were decoded. Tyrannus unraveled the complexities of this biological miracle and managed to replicate the process of its creation and clone a new set of progenoid glands from the original sample. It is assumed that Tyrannus had the new organs implanted within him and his lieutenant's body. And then, they simply vanished into the oblivion of time and history. Well, 
I hope you like this rundown of the Thunder Warriors. Tune in next week as we finish up the Unification War with some of the battles and, of course, the techno-barbarian lore. If you enjoyed this Vox, please like, follow, subscribe, and comment. Also, feel free to check out our new shop where you can get some merchandise from our channel. Well, that be it. And as always, <clears throat> until next time, this is Ekthar, signing off. Thank <laughs> you.